Hey, g'day, how you all going out there? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, or AKA Indianapolis, your acrylic guru. This evening, well it's this evening today, I'm filming at the evening time. Oh, I've got me cold coffee going there. Now I've been away for a bit because I've had a lot of internet issues with my service provider. It was going on for two to three weeks. I was having dropout issues. I've got it sorted. The speed's not up to where it should be. I've got a technician coming out tomorrow and I thought, bugger this, I'm gonna get some painting done. All right? And you saw the picture there at the opening credits there. It's gonna be a beginner's one, how to paint. So a beautiful sunset with an island palm in front of it and some reflecting water, all right? So, we'll start off with me plain canvas there and there's the sizes for those people who like to know how big that canvas board is. All right, can you see them? And as usual, I'll pull to the side here and um, they're the colours we're going to use in this tutorial as well. There's not that many. And if you don't have any of these colours, you can always make your own. So grab the three prime colours, blue, red and yellow, and learn how to make some colours up out of those instead of buying a whole heap of colours you don't really need in the beginning until you get things working out for yourself. All right? All right, so I've got a water bottle here. Where are we? Down on my palette here, I've got some just yellow. I've been saving all my leftovers yellows and I've just been putting it into a tub. So I don't know exactly if this is a mid-yellow, cadmium yellow. It's just yellow. For you beginners, just a simple yellow can do. And if you want to blend the way I teach you how to blend, you're going to have to get yourself some of this clear medium retarder. It works wonderful. All right, I'm going to put a bit of that next to the paint there like that. And I'm going to use a couple of brushes here, a couple of two inch brushes for applicating and blending. All right, so let's get back up to the canvas. I'm going to use this one to apply it. So I just want to bomb that paint into the paintbrush and mixing it with that retarder. I'm using a big two inch brush because the smaller flathead ones can take a bit of time. I like to use those for other things, all right? Also, to make that paint blend on my dry canvas, I like to give it a squirt of water so as that yellow paint with retarder is going to flow over it. Now, my retarder, let's say my horizon line, I want it about that high. You can have it as high or low as you want, depending if you want to paint more sky or more water. All right, so I'm going to have it about there, and I want to paint all this yellow. Now, this yellow has got the retarder in it. There was a painting I did a while ago, I used masking tape. Painted to the masking tape, pulled it off, put it to the other side and did the bottom. But I found I created a ridge. So what I'm going to do in this one, I'm going to paint a bit beyond my horizon line, okay. And then I'll mask that up and then when I paint into that, I will not get a ridge. All right, the next color I've put on my palette is some red gold. If you don't have red gold or cannot find it, mix yourself up an orange color. That's it's pretty much orange. So I've got me red gold dollop of paint there, and I'm gonna get some retarder into that because this needs a bit of blending as well. So let's get this mixed up. Now work out where you want your sunset. I want mine about there, so I'm gonna leave that bit of a yellow there. And I want to get this sort of up into the sky. I'm doing long strokes across the sky. Come across. Get a bit more on the brush. I don't want to really fill in the area where I want my sunset. All right. So we leave that bit open. See now this red gold or slash orange has the retarder in it as well. So does that yellow underneath and the watered down primer board is helping all this move across it. All right, now grab yourself a blending brush and blend that yellow into that red gold slash orange and see what we're getting here. I'm blending it with this brush on the angle I did the brush strokes. 
I'm getting just the edge done first, then I'll go right into the middle. All right, so we're gonna blend all this over the yellow, into the yellow and off the yellow. I better stop leaning on the camera caddy, otherwise I'll be shaking you around like anything. All right, practice your blending as well. Blending's a great thing to learn and once you know how to do it, wipe your paper towel. Um, you have fun and it's great, all right? All right, we've got that blended. Now you wanna grab a pouncer, come down to your paint. I'm gonna use some white paint now. I'm just gonna dampen me pouncer a bit so I can load it up. Okay, I'm twisting it into that paint so it's all loaded evenly onto the flat surface of the pouncer. And my son is here, so I'm gonna twist it in there, pick up some more paint, okay? And then start dancing this around dance it around and participate to the outer edge until it starts fading away, all right? And you'll notice it's fading away. Ah, look at that. Now grab yourself another clean brush for blending. I just so happen to have a lot here. And I wanna blend that outer edge just softly into there. Just softly, softly. See like that? I'm just tapping, dancing, twisting, just getting it very softly. Nothing's been dried yet. Now I'm picking up some more paint on that pouncer. And I want to intensify the middle again because we've kind of lost it, but it's all a work in progress. Okay, beautiful. Dance around a bit. Dance around some more. Sometimes with blending you got to give it a few goes. And I want to pump the middle of that back in there again. Ah, that's really intense. And carefully blend this back again. That's it. I'm liking the look of that. Now back down here, I'm using a flathead brush because I don't need the big one. And I want to pick up some of the red gold slash orange and darken up some of those areas. So I just want to put some here. I'm stamping it on because if I brush it on, it'll push it into the background. And then I want to blend that just so I've got a darker value there of this orange gold over the background there. Keep your paper towel, a rag or something handy so when you're blending you can always clean the debris off your brush. All right now we'll add some more darker aspects to the other side. I'm just trying to stamp it on and then fidget it out, just like that. And we wanna blend that into there. So we got some darker values onto that side there. Nothing's been dried yet. Now down here, I've got some raw sienna and I'm gonna need, not too much, a, a bit of retarder with this one as well, just so we can blend some darker values into the sky up there. So I wanna kind of put them here. Oh, look at that ugly hair there, eh? Get him off there. Maybe a bit in that. Grab a blending brush and blend that into that orange. 
can that one. Just getting some different values in the sky over here. I've just stabbed some onto my blending brush just to blend it through. There we go, look at that. Because I just want to put some basic simple clouds with this as well. Alright, probably a bit over this one. All right, now we'll get some clouds on there. So I like to use me white paint on a fan brush. And we'll, we can create the bottom here. So I wanna sort of get a, a cloud up here and it's gonna create its own shadows. I, for some reason, always like to put a tail out on them like that. Grab yourself a blending brush and from halfway down, very lightly blend and twist, wipe on a paper towel, and watch how easy a cloud becomes in this bright orange African type sky. Wipe. Participate it down. Now my little tail, I'm gonna slowly turn my brush this way and tickle him out there like that if I can. See? Because I've been able to blend and move this paint, why I've been able to blend and move it is because of the retarder. Now see the top, it's fine, but I always like to give them a, just the littlest tickle. Just sit them down. All right, and always clean your brush when you're gonna whack another cloud in there. So we wanna leave the top of the cloud and the bottom shadow, and then to, to do another one, so it sort of gives them their real look. Grab your blending brush and your paper roller towel or rags again and do the same. Very lightly tap. See, this is just tapping, now twisting. See the difference? that in front of there like that. That's a nice, easy, beautiful cloud. You can put this style of cloud on anything, okay? Now this cloud has a bottom, but it's not at the bottom of the atmosphere. All right, and we'll put something on the other side. Let's say we have something, you watch how easy a cloud is. Let's just say we have this one up, an uppity sort of cloud and he's going to come in front of the sun there like that put your brush down and start blending wipe it on the paper towel get it out there look at that see in the colors are getting pulled through to create the sunset -y colors. And if you want, tickle the tops. You don't have to, that's just a habit of mine. Now, if you want, you can put some clouds down in the atmosphere. So I'll probably put, you watch this. It doesn't matter how you dab them on, they turn into a cloud when you blend them. Just blending the bottoms. These are gonna be down on the atmosphere, these ones. one and maybe one over here that'll do and I want to blend that down into the atmosphere now to the top of the water when we get the water on there I'm going a bit hard now because it's gone a bit tacky and drying because it's night time and I've got some hot lights overhead it's drying it out and get your brush and if you want just highlight some of these tops if you want to. 
just like that. Oh wow, we better put something just in front of this one, just so it sits it down, you know. There we go. And we'll blend that. We'll put something in the atmosphere here as well. Well, one side's going to have the island, so it's not that imperative to go on this side with that. But anyway, we've got a beautiful sunset, orangey sky there. All right, how are we all going there? We all caught up and everything. This is where you can have a break now because all the blending's done and we can dry that. And I want to mask this up about here to do the the bottom bit. But before I do that, I just want to have a drink of me coffee because I do not want to neglect me coffee. <sighs> all righty. Um, and you can also like um, look at it and this is where if you need to, if you want to, you can put some finer details in it if you like, but sometimes less is best and stop touching it, leave it alone. So I'm gonna get my hair dry now and blow dry this. Now I've just, I've just dried this bottom bit here because that's where I'm gonna put the tape. I'll grab my longer. Now see the, see the tape, see the bottom of those clouds? I want that atmosphere coming down to the water. That's what I want. So that's where I wanna put my tape. I don't want to put it way up here or down there like that. All right, I'm looking for my atmosphere. That's where I want it, but I've got to put it on the top side, don't forget, which is about there. Keep it level. And you can do a horizon line freehand. I have done it in the past, or you can just mask her up. Now, we're going to virtually get our water here and find our clouds and sun and glare, merge and blend that reflections into here, all right? It's not gonna be hard, so we've got enough of the same colors again and we're gonna start again, but on this section. I found a pot of warm red. It looks a bit orangey red, okay? Uh, it's just a, it's a fine art paint, but it's more or less for beginners as well. It's not a really expensive or structured paint. So I'm gonna give that a go just for the bottom. So with anything, it's probably gonna give more of a redder tone down the bottom, all right? So now what we gotta do, okay, we're gonna spray the water there. We're going to get our retarder and build up the yellow. Where's my applicating brush? Here it is over here. So let's load that up with retarder. I want a bit more retarder because I want this to really bleed and merge and blend together. Now, we'll get it all along here quickly. I'm not worried about those darker colours at the top of the water because I can use the other colour to merge that all right now i'm going to give this brush a quick clean and down here i'm mixing the warm red that i found you can stick with the yellow gold that you had or orange i'm just trying this because i had it and this has got retarder in it as well now i want to keep the yellow roughly here so i want to sort of do that i'm covering up the we'll try and keep them straight Okay, now I'm going to put that down like a gentleman, grab a blending brush, come from this side and just come all the way across to the yellow like that. See, and that retarder has allowed that to bleed like that. We better put a bit more over here because it's dark. Now what I want to do, just for the art's sake, is get some of our darker colour for the horizon line. Now I've got some burnt sienna and some more retarder. I'm just putting it onto a flathead brush. 
so as I can direct it up to the horizon line. I don't want too much retarder on that. And we want to just like that, wipe the brush you were sweeping the water with and come from that end and push it in. Okay, just like that, just so we're darkening up that horizon line. And let's go the other side as well. Let's sort of put it on like that. I want to get that bit back there. Now we'll do this bit. Once we take this tape off, it'll bring it back together. Alright, now let's finish it off. I've got my flathead brush again. I've cleaned it. I'm picking up the mid yellow or that yellow that I've had, the yellow you're using. And let's find this in the middle there like that. Bomb it on like that. You're sort of ladling, ladling it onto the canvas. So you've got something to pull through. All right, so let's blend that across. We want to come there, there, there. I'll wipe the brush. Okay, there we go. We've got that nice sort of shimmery. Now, if you like, I want to get some of this titanium white just for the art's sake. This is just something I want to do. We'll take the tape off. Now when you're taking tape off, don't pull it at a 90 degree angle, pull it right back at itself. That way, it'll do less bleeding as possible and it'll cut the paint. This is not a good quality tape, so hence I've got a little bit of bleeding there, but I'm not that fussed about it. All right. Now, I just want to put a bit of shimmer across here. And I want to just sort of get some shimmer over here. How's that? That'll do it. I don't want to get carried away. Mainly, in I like to intensify it at the horizon there. And it can participate out to nothing. All right. Now we're just going to finish it off. We're going to put a island and a couple of palm trees here. All right. And for that, I'm just going to use a couple of flathead brushes. Um, and they'll do the job for me, all right. So I'm gonna, I've got some Payne's Grey down here. Come and have a look at this. So I want to scrape it onto my flathead brush, straight out of the tube. And I want to sort of have the island coming off the picture, up here, okay. Just make it any shape you want. And instead of having it coming flush to the horizon line like that, I want to bring the the cape of the island or the tip of the island just past there like that that'll do can you all see that and then we'll come across here 
like that. You can tape that bottom up if you desire to. And we'll paint that in. Now, if I didn't dry underneath there, those colours will be mudding up with this Payne's Grey and it'll be giving you grief. See, they're still mudding up a little bit because there's probably bits that are tacky, but you dry it good and proper, you won't have any mudding up issues, all right? So we get all that done like that. And then we'll just finally put in a couple of real easy palms. Now, those of you who followed me and have seen a few of my previous videos, you all know how to do an easy palm. Okay, I've got a few flathead brushes here that I want to do my palm trees. Now, this is just the easiest brush to do simple palm trees, okay? Now, I've gone and just penciled in some lines where I want them to go. Now, we just get the paint on your chiseled brush like that. Chisel the edge of your flathead brush so it's chiseled nice and... See how that's got a dag hanging down? Paint that off it. And then start from the top. Alright, because you can start from the... The thinnest bit and then you can get a bit heavy-handed and make it a bit fatter down the bottom just like that okay let's do another one and the less you muck around with it the better it'll turn out too just like that I'll tidy these little edges up later but I'm just going to quickly get these in for now. Okay, look at that. That was very easy. All right. Now, load your brush up again and work out which brush you want to do your palm frongs with. So this little one, I'm going to use the smaller brush. And like I said, down here, it's just a simple up and down. But put a bit of a, a bend in it as well. And the more you practice these, the better you'll get at it. All right, so we'll do this little one first. So we'll get something over here, just like that. And then, like I've said, those people who understand how I do them, there's your, there's your palm tree, but you don't want it to look like spokes of a wheel. Just busy the middle up a bit here and there. Busy it up. You can detail it if you want with coconuts, but this is just a basic, simple beginner's one here, okay? And then we're going to do the same again for the, um, let's say, this one here. See, it's just bush. It's nothing to it, really. I might do one blowing over here. And busy up the middle there. All right. And let's get that beautiful big one. I'll use my other brush now, the wider one. And I want him to be... Let's always just come right out, whoosh. There's his mane. I'll get another one over there. Something else here. You don't have to do both sides of it. You just sort of, you're not going for some realism. When you're going for realism, you can start watching different tutorialists to learn all that sort of science in painting. There we go. Now I'm just going to quickly busy up the middle, just like that. But with this busyness, if anything, you got blobs. If anything, Make those blobs a bit sharp there. Okay, just a bit sharp there. And we'll quickly do this one. See how easy it is?
if anything, you don't want to go too mad like I've done here. I've sort of gone a bit mad, but... Ah. All right, I've just mixed up a bit of this colour and that colour, just mudded up, and I'll just put my autograph down here in the bottom. Okay, and we'll get this sign there. It's just a bit of all the colours mixed together to get our autograph. Clean that little brush straight away so as you don't get left behind and go all hard and yucky, all right? All right? Now, we'll pack a frame on this. <laughs> there we go, that don't look too shabby in a frame. And beautiful sunset, very simple and easy to do. And our reflective water and a simple palm island. We don't have to go and put the shadows down here and the reflection because that's not the sort of painting it is. That's the sort of painting it is, okay? That's not too shabby. All right, I hope you enjoyed this little beginner's exercise. If you like what I do, you tell a friend, but if you don't, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.